Welcome to Crown Mick Diaries. <laughs> this car up uh, I'd say a couple months ago on November uh, it, the paint doesn't look great I know but the car has 66,000 original miles on it and it's extremely clean underneath and I got the car for free you got the car for free yep how the hell did you manage that um, someone wanted a really clapped out F-150 that I got for free so, I wanted this car, they wanted that truck, I swapped them out. Wow. Um, so, we'll go, since you saw John's car here, I'll, uh, we'll go right into the, the hood of mine. There isn't much to show, unfortunately, but I can give you some differences now of the two cars, and you'll be able to see how much that one has changed. So this is stock 50302 from the 1986. Stock Lopo uh, goodness. This one currently doesn't have its accessory belt on for the air conditioning and stuff like that. Um, I actually don't even know if the air conditioning works in this car. I'll find out at some point. Um, the air box, this is what they stock look like. Um, they don't flow good at all. They're actually pretty terrible. Uh, the throttle body is like a 50 millimeter throttle body or something like that. It's tiny. They could they could flow worse, and uh, as much as it's I hate to interrupt you, but as much as it's you know not you know ideal, it's more ideal than a cone air filter that like dumps right here ask, because ask you're how we know because how we know that. one oh sorry about that folks uh, the battery died on the camera and I'm an idiot and I forgot the other battery so we're continuing uh, Steve's video. Of his car on Phoenix. this so, phone. If you notice some of that car, how thick the radiator was in that one, this is what stock they look like. It's not impressive, it's not great. Um, it's barely adequate. Something interesting about the 1986s, though, is the ignition coil is mounted over here, whereas before that and after that, they're mounted on here. Um, on 87 and up, they are mounted on the compressor uh, bracket. On the earlier vehicles, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they are mounted over here on the valve cover. That's terrible. It um, is quite terrible. This car did have a lot of work done to it before I got it. Um, timing chain was uh, changed, new water pump motor was resealed because apparently it used to leak really badly when that when he, uh, the previous guy had it. Now it only leaks slightly less. Yeah, now it's not bad. <laughs> um, it's it's a gutless wonder, straight up, I'm going to be honest, but it's smooth to drive and it gets decent gas mileage, weirdly enough. Um, it, it's, it gets a lot better than you think it would. Yeah. Contrary now, to, people, to people's uh, popular belief, these cars are not as bad on fuel as uh, you, think they, you think they would be. Now this car has been, for the most part, entirely rewired already, and not because we put a new motor in it. Not yet. That, that comes that, later. That comes later. I have one. <laughs> um, that, and some of this, a lot of the stuff you'll see in this car is actually from my other car that was my first LTV from Victoria, and actually my first project car. Um, and that was a four-door um, deep shadow metallic blue LX. 1987. Yes, that car was named Harley. Um, you'll see it every here and there in certain videos because we're pulling parts off of it, putting on this one because I'm actually getting rid of that car. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there really is to the engine of this car. There normally is a fan shroud like right here. Um, we didn't bother putting it in because this motor isn't going to be in here long enough to worry about it. Yeah. Um, so I'll go ahead and shut the hood here. Now you'll notice one very neat thing about this hood. Oh, go on. Rub it in. There's no dent here. I can fix that. Please don't. <laughs> right here, it's nice and straight. Yeah. 
and I, I have the same clear by bezel Headley bezels that he has. Um, those are also off my four door um, that I scoured eBay for months to find this this one corner was the hardest thing for me to find. I can find the the big turn signal lenses all day one. and the passenger one all day long. This one couldn't find it. Nope. Could not find it. We're gonna cruise on to the back here. Doors. I have the same wheels. Mine are extremely dirty, mind you, but same wheels, same brake setup as this car. Uh, same tires even for the time being. Minus uh, the anti-lock brakes. Yeah, I don't that, have that. That, co that comes later. Now we're gonna go ahead and pop the door open if you just wanna come around here. Right. Sure. One thing you gotta understand with the uh, two doors, door they're a bit friggin' long. So. This is the stock interior of what they little kind of stock. It's the speedometer. I have a 140 mile speedometer, but it hasn't been altered with, so it has the same lights it would have had from factory minus the low oil pressure lights that they would have gotten. And this one doesn't have a low fuel light either, actually, now nope. thinking about it. The, I've only seen one 140 mile an hour speedometer that actually came with those factory, and I should have bought it. <laughs> Um, his two door has auto lamps. This one does not. It's a pull out switch, and you adjust your, your dimmer damage. switch that way. Here's a hood release on the car, and there's the parking brake release right there. That's what your foot pedals look like in these things. Nothing special. Now, remember his two door, his climate control didn't look like this. This is what the stock one looks like. There are two variations. Yeah, there's this one which has four fan speeds. The other one has an auto setting, and they, it has a temperature up here. These are aligned with temperatures, and if you set it, it's supposed to hold it. Um, they break, and usually don't work. But, this is better. This radio, you might find it's a bit interesting, is not the stock radio for this car. The stock radio for this car had a tape deck. Um... We put this in here because there's a Bluetooth receiver wired to the back of or wired inside here, so that the car has a Bluetooth radio. Which, yeah, I mean, it's a 36 year old car with Bluetooth, it's kind of neat. It also has you know, hands free calling, which is helpful when you're driving. I don't think John covered this in his car, but if you pop those open, the vanity mirrors here, so adjustable dimness on your vanity mirrors because uh, four sometimes months. you need low beams, sometimes you need high beams to look at all the crevices and, and cracks crevices in your face. Now this car is a bit, <clears throat> It's the interior is not in as good a shape as his. It's, sorry about that. As you can see it's the interior got a bit of sun to, to it. It's a bit faded. This is still stock interior, stock seating wise. I ignore the car parts and such. The bad thing about the red interiors on this car is they do tend to sun fade. Really so if badly. If you have one that's in good shape, make sure you're covering it or keeping it in the garage. Now, the good thing about a two door Crown Vic is they're the same size as the four doors. They do not change. Um, they don't change in size. So you have just as much room in the back seat as you would in the four door version of the car. Um, which is nice because you it's nice to have a two door car because in my opinion they look better um with the sides of four door because if people aren't struggling to get it um this, yeah, these cars are both vinyl tops this one has to be done as you can see it's got a chrome license plate bezel 1979. I know it's really interesting riveting topics here, but I'm just kind of picking where choosing where I can with this car because I don't have a whole lot done just yet. It's actually it's actually a lot better than what they did come with, which is actually still in the trunk. Now, if you're in the trunk of one of these things, you can fit about 12 Steves. Yeah. This is the stock the uh, uh, license plate bucket. This one's actually in decent shape too. These cars come with bumper jocks, jacks, jocks, yeah, from factory. Which is what they look like there, and they they would clip onto a thing right down here. And they, 
Um, Steve, why don't you show them how big the trunk is? Alright. So, if you're curious, you want to take a casual nap in your Crown Vic. <laughs> take care, buddy. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's that i can't hear you oh oh wait that's considered kidnapping oh well, let me out let, let me let him out <laughs> now another bad thing about these cars it's actually kind of comfortable that's they, not a bad thing they don't have a safety release in these things yeah so uh, do with the with that information as you will don't encourage that i'm not saying anything don't encourage that. There's actually a way that you can get out, yeah. but you do need um, a pair of pliers or something. Uh, this right here is the opposite side of the uh, the keyhole release. If you turn that uh, to uh, the left, yeah, 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 because it turns right on the outside. If you turn like that to, to the left, you can get out. If you don't mind. No, why don't you just, uh, you look good in there. Say, plenty of space back there. And that's pretty much all there is to this car. Now, I reciprocate the question to you. Sure. What got you into Crown Vix? <laughs> and what got you into these specific Crown Vix and modifying them? Well, that's an interesting story, actually. So... My first car was a 2001 uh, Crown Victoria P71. And that car was really messed up. I got it for 500 bucks. I totaled it a week later. What happened? I got backed into it at a red light. I was stopped. You got backed into at a red light? Yep. And What hit you, a big truck or something? Nope, it was a Subaru Forester, and it went over the front bumper and it collapsed the front suspension of the car. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's still a new me, one. Still got me home, though. And after that, I bought a 2003 Ford Crown Victoria P71 for 500 bucks again. And it needed a transmission and catalytic converters. Did it. That car drove great. I had it for a long time. Um, one day I take it to a pizza place and me and my dad were getting pizza and the 1998 uh, black Mercury Grand Marquis pulls up outside, parked like a douchebag. And this guy walks in and I compliment on his car. So, you know, it's a Panther platform. I like him. Yeah, hey, yeah. And He's like, oh, well, if you think this one's cool, you should check out my other ones. And he sends me a picture of that car right there. Oh, was I the guy? You were the guy. Huh. And I was. I started talking about the car because he sent me some sound clips of the exhaust. And sound Demonetized. Great. Sorry about Demonetized. that. Demonetized. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, I have to have one of these. Because I had somewhat looked for a wagon of these because I like wagons but I never was serious about actually getting one and after seeing this one and his four door his four door is the one that I really 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 liked um, so I was scrolling through Facebook marketplace and I started sending him cars keep in mind I met this dude like two days earlier just a random a random dude um, and that weekend I went and bought my blue car with a Dude, I, just, I don't recommend doing that, by the way, because people are weird and weird shit might happen. Um, so don't do that. I just got lucky and he didn't mug me. Um, but yeah, me, him, and my dad went, bought this car that had been sitting in the woods for 16 years. And uh, yeah, I paid too much money for it. It was rusty. It was not running. It was on flat tires and had been sitting under trees for 16 years in the middle of North Jersey. And I had never trailered anything with my truck before. It was, like the, it was like the top of New Jersey. You could you could see New York. Yeah. It was pretty bad. So I, I bought it. <laughs> I got it home and I was I was so happy. In the back of my, 
mine. I was like, Jesus, what did I just buy? Uh, but and you know what? Time, time, effort. Car was running. Lots of effort. Uh, wasn't running good, but it was running. And then, in, in for more time and more effort, uh, it was running good. And then the brakes had to be completely redone. And then the suspension, and just to make it drivable, really. And then, you know, I was driving it at that point. It was, it was I, I could drive the car. And this is where I get into why I started modifying them. That's why I got into them. Why I started modifying them was I would go on drives, you know, me and him would hang out, and I would be driving next to his cars, and I would just get absolutely dusted. Um, and that would infuriate me. This one infuriates me. It's kind of bad. Um, I get, like, violently angry about it. Just because when you get passed by a Prius, you kind of feel some type of way. Um, so I was like, all right, yeah, let, let's let's do this. Um, but me being the asshole that I am, decided I was gonna do it to the extreme. So with that blue car, I was like, I went out and bought a set of 373s that I had actually had prior to buying that car because I had bought them for my 03, but just never put them in. And uh, from three uh, with 373s, never put them in the car. In fact, that's what's going in this car. Um, but and then me being once again the just pushing it too far, I decided I wanted to build this. The motor of all motors is what I always thought about in my head. It's a 302. Uh, board out, board 30 over. Uh, XC 270HR cam, GT40P heads, all that good stuff. And it's got 10 to 1 compression and forged internals, ARP rods, studs, 17 rockers. Um, it's, I, I, I wanted to build a motor for boost for a Crown Vic. Well, you kind of screwed up going 10 to 1. Well, you know. You're, you're already running what? Uh, 89 octane in that? 93. 93. And, if you remember correctly, the reason why that car has 10 to 1 compression is because we can't read. Which is why the car has flat top pistons in it. Well, you know, when you build a car at the height of uh, COVID, and get. there's no, you know, availability for parts, uh, you get you get what you uh, can get. That's pretty much that's how I got into Crown Vicks. I've always kind of liked them. And that's how I got into Crown Vicks. And that's why I started performing them. And I wasn't even trying to buy this car. In fact, I wasn't even looking for one. I never had an intention of getting one. Um, because I was happy with my blue one. And then John sent me this to tell me his guy, his buddy was getting rid of it. And I'm like, for shits and giggles, does he want an F-150 for it? And he said yes. Yeah. In, the, in, the, in the words of Taylor Swift, I'm the problem. It's me. And I bought it. <laughs> and that's how I ended up with this car. And that's, that's just, that's, you know, that's how I got in the crowd vex. That's how I started making them fast. That's how I met John. And that's a walkthrough of this car a little bit. Anything else that you think I should add or any other questions? Um, no, at, at least for right now, I think we've pretty much covered our bases on both of the cars without going way too in-depth yeah. with uh, the things that have been done to either of them or will be getting done to them. So, that'll, that'll, that'll do that. Is there anything else that you uh, were thinking Really, I mean, this is just a kind of a passion project of me and John because we like these cars and we want to share the interesting stories of them because they're entertaining and some are just downright unbelievable, to be honest with you. Uh, there's one that involves a Costco. <laughs> uh, yeah, we will uh, we will delve into that another another time. And a fox body Mustang, but uh, when we were two for the blue one. Oh, yeah. so good! Oh, so much fun! And with that, we're going to conclude this uh, introduction to Crown Vic Diaries. Uh, we'd like to thank you so much for watching. 
And if there's, if there's anything that you want to see, or any suggestions that you want to leave, put those too. Alright, you guys take care.